Hey, and welcome to this edition of Road Warrior. I'm your host, Grant Robertson. Now, the small SUV segment has really come to the forefront now. It's always been there, but maybe it's getting a little bit more notice right now. And the way you can tell that is by the re-engineering and redesign of a lot of models. One notable of that, of course, is the 2014 Ford Escape. Now, this particular design has been out for a couple years and continues on the path that it's already started. Now, what we're going to do is dive inside this vehicle, look at what a small segment vehicle like this has to offer on the inside and under the hood. Now we take one glimpse at the exterior of the Ford Escape, you're really going to draw on other competitors out there. Does it kind of look like the new Honda CRV? Sure. Now it's going to compare size wise to what else is on the market, just like the Honda CRV and even the hybrid Subaru. Crosstrek we just drove just a few weeks ago. Now by the number, it's going to measure in around about 178 inches with about 105 inch wheelbase. Now again, those are comparable and what you're going to find is that even with that somewhat small demeanor on the outside, it still does quite well on the inside. Better yet, of course, it still delivers cargo space in the back. Now, what you're also going to look at on vehicles like this is the ground clearance. Now, it's going to ride somewhat like a car versus an SUV. This one ran at about 7.9 inches off the ground. Now, as for the wheel choices, it's come standard with 17 inch wheels, with 19 inch being an option. Now again, the exterior of the Ford Escape is comparable to the Honda CRV, as both vehicles really had an evolution over the last few years. Now prior to that, this model was a little bit more simple, not really anything to kind of wow about. Now with the new designs, of course, got sleeker roof line, a little bit more aerodynamic, and a little bit more to write home about. Now looking at this particular model, you're going to see body color all the way around, right down to the mirrors, with a little bit of chrome accents. Now I like the fact that the rims are a little bit more subdued, don't want to see any bling down there because this is a very small vehicle, adding attention down here to the wheels, really not my forte. Now as you swing around to the back, it's standard operating procedure, nice design, of course a little bit of sculpting back here. Now the best feature I like on this particular model is, is, is that power rear hatch. You come up here, electronic release, and it's going to rise up. Now in other models, if you come up here, you can actually swing your foot out, it has a motion detector system, and it will actually rise up for you. Now it took me a minute to figure that out, that it wasn't on this particular model because I kept kicking the bumper and it literally hurt my foot and nothing ever happened. Now one of the best features about a smaller SUV like this is the cargo area and that comes as a shock because you would think smaller it just doesn't mean bigger. Now in the case of this particular model it's going to be around about 34 cubic feet. Now as compared to an average sedan it's going to be anywhere between 14 to 18 cubic feet. So obviously when you go to a smaller SUV like this you're really going to deliver cargo compared to the average sedan. Now if you want to more than double that space you can actually lay it down flat giving you one huge cargo around about 68 cubic feet. Now some other nice features about the rear cargo area of course is this rubberized rear bumper. Now that versus body color that can easily get scraped up when you're taking the items in and out. Now on a small SUV like this you're really going to notice that kind of lower footprint that it has. Really helping with the ingress of items. That versus a full size SUV that's going to require a little bit more oomph to put things in here. Now when you look on the rear cargo floor you're going to notice a full size spare. And even better is this rear cargo floor really can come out and allow you to clean it, kind of dust it off and put it right back into place. Now when you think about lift gates, you really need to think about the ability to close it, obviously if you're a little bit more vertically challenged. Now in this particular model, it has the power button right here. Now obviously if you're a little bit short, it's going to be hard to reach, but what they've done is actually you set it into place, press and hold this at the height you desire, and it's actually going to memorize that. That way when you open it back up next time, it's actually going to come to the height you prefer versus what the vehicle wants it to be at. Now when you climb inside these smaller SUVs, you're really going to notice that the interior volume is shocking. And we talked about it before because when you look at the outside, it just doesn't deliver what the big room is on the inside. Now by the leg room numbers, you're looking at about 43 inches up front, plenty of space for any size frame. Now when you go into the back, about 36 inches, that's a little bit above par on these type of vehicles because 35 and less is typically what you're going to find. So it's going to be great numbers for anyone in the back seat. Now we start talking about the latest vehicles out, you really start to think about innovations and at the forefront of that is the new LCD screens about on every dash out. Now the Ford Escape does that quite well and what they do is they really break it into a four quadrant system, allow you to see a lot of functions on the screen at one time. Now all you have to do is of course hit the corresponding button like the entertainment and it's going to magnify and give you all the options right there. Kind of reminds me more of a computer screen. Now they've really minimized the buttons down here, keeping the dash fairly simple and what, it does take a little bit of getting used to because you got to really find those little touch screen 
and buttons, but otherwise it navigates quite well. Now the engine comes coupled with a six-speed automatic transmission regardless of which power plant you go with. Now as for the overall ergonomics on the inside of the vehicle, it's going to be pretty much straightforward. The dual cup holders here, cup holders in the door. But one interesting fact is the center console. Now it looks uninviting from the outside, but once you open it up, you're really going to kind of find this deep console. Really it's going to house almost anything you throw at it. Now in there is going to be an SD reader, USB connections, but kind of like a cup holder looking area. Now I guess you could put a drink in there, but otherwise it's really going to swallow anything you throw in there. Now looking at the backseat area on any small SUV like this is really where it become anemic and really cramped for the backseat passengers. Now on the Ford Escape, they're actually a little bit above par in my opinion. Again, average about 36 inches, that compared to average about 34 to 35 on other vehicles. Now again, what's great about here is the ability to change these from passenger haulers to cargo. Now the real comparison you want to find between different vehicles is the ability to do that fairly quickly. And one of the biggest problems you're going to find is the headrest. With headrest in place, when they fold down, you're going to almost either remove them or move the seats forward. In this case, they made it real easy. You press it, it flips down, and really one handle is going to make it flip and tumble. That's going to change this over to a cargo area really in one fell swoop. And again, it's going to average about 68 cubic feet back here. Plenty of room to haul most any item you throw at it. Now there's a lot to talk about here at the back of the Ford Escape and one of those is safety. Now on this particular model they have the backup sensors and better yet that backup camera that translates to the screen up front. Now what that does is really put safety at the forefront of this vehicle allowing you to see behind you long before you even move the vehicle. Now thing complicated on the Ford Escape may be right here under the hood because it comes with three power plant options. The base one being the 2.5 liter inline four cylinder engine, the 1.6 liter EcoBoost, or the 2.0 liter EcoBoost engine. Now the comparison between the two first options is somewhat minimal with the 2.5 liter getting around about 168 horses and the 1.6 liter EcoBoost getting about 178. Now if you go to the 2.0 liter EcoBoost, that's going to deliver the best horsepower around about 240 horses. Now put all that together and really fuel economy is not even that different. Averaging somewhere between 20 to 30 miles per gallon regardless of how you equip it. And that does it for this edition of Roy Ward and our test drive behind the wheel of the 2014 Ford Escape. Now again, it comes with three power plant options under the hood, something that we really think they can minimize down to one because equally they all kind of deliver about the same fuel economy. But the best part about this kind of small offering from the exterior is it really offers big room on the inside, especially in that cargo area. Now again, I'd like to thank you for watching this edition of Roy Warrior. And as always, keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.